All right, hop right into it. Pick 11, Chicago Bears on the clock. And the talks are right now that Danny Trevathan is going to be coming to Chicago. Now, this could shake things up, and they could go a different direction here. But to me, Trevathan, more of an inside linebacker, and the pick I got for the Bears is an outside linebacker. Darren Lee was one of the biggest risers after the combine, put on a show there. And I think that you give John Fox weapons like Darren Lee and Danny Trevathan, and I think it's very, very dangerous. It's a team that's in rebuild mode, too. It's it's in a bit of an odd stage where you're saying goodbye to Matt Forte, and but you have Alshon Jeffrey kind of... You're saying goodbye to Matt Forte, right? But Jeremy Langford is the rookie so now he's going to start to maybe emerge. You have Alshon Jeffrey, who's kind of already established himself, and then you have Jay Cutler, who's more towards the back end. So offensively, it's kind of all over the place. But John Fox a bit more of a defensive guy, and I think that he can go defense here, go Darren Lee, and have a very, very dangerous linebacking core if that is the decision he makes. I, I really like Darren Lee, though. I think that he's a guy who has to be a top 15 pick. We'll move it down to 12. The, the New Orleans Saints, I mean, what can you say about this team? The The, the defense is bad, it, historically bad. 45 passing touchdowns they gave up last season, but it's it's not just the secondary. This defense is just, it's horrible, and they have to just get the best defensive player on the board. Whoever it is is who the Saints need to be picking. For me, at this pick here, the best defensive player on the board is Shaq Lawson, and I love Shaq Lawson. A lot of scouts were kind of skeptical of him. I, I they they saw him going in the later twenties. I don't think that they thought his. I think that they thought his college production wouldn't carry over to the NFL. But he impressed mightily at the combine, and I think that kind of got rid of their worries because now you see Shaq Lawson up in in mock drafts in most of them in the top fifteen where he belongs, and he can create pressure on the quarterback. He, he can get sacks, but where he's so lethal is as a run stuffer. And a, an ACC coach you know, quoted saying, we knew we could not run towards his side, led all of college football in tackles for loss, and Shaq Lawson steps right in for the Saints and makes an impact, is going to already be one of their best defenders. The this team could honestly go defense. The first three selections in this draft, it, it has to be defense. There's just so much, so many different positions that they really need to upgrade. And I, I think they started off by getting Shaq Lawson. Pick 13, Philadelphia Eagles. They bring back Sam Bradford. They say goodbye to Kiko. They say goodbye to Byron Maxwell. And they say goodbye to DeMarco Murray. This team can go anywhere. Um, getting rid of Kiko Alonso, I think, they, they won't address linebacker because they got rid of Kiko so easily because their linebacking core is already so good. Even minus Kiko Alonso, that is still one of the better linebacking cores within the NFL. And I, I really like their front seven as a whole. You got Fletcher Cox, Pro Bowl talent. Um, and they just re-signed Vinnie Curry, who, who is really good. They have Graham on one side. They have Connor Barwin on the other. Um, they, they, they can do a lot of things there. And Jim Schwartz is going to have a lot of, of possibilities. Um, but the secondary has been a problem for the Philadelphia Eagles for a long time. Now, the past two seasons, it's been horrible. It's been really rough to watch. And with Byron Maxwell gone, there's really no cornerback there for for this team to lean on. Uh, I'm just going to quickly look up the name of the guy who they they just signed um, today, Leotis McLeaven, uh, the the 30-year-old former Buffalo Bill. But is that someone that gets you excited? Is he going to be your number one corner? I don't think so. Now, I know they have Eric Rowe, But I think Eric Rowe maybe makes the move back to safety, and I think maybe they let Walter Thurman III walk in free agency. So there there needs to be corners addressed by the Eagles. I don't know if Leotis McCleaven is going to be the only one that they sign. But for the Eagles, I think the pick's got to be Mackenzie Alexander, one of my favorite prospects just from a a pure fan point. He's a shutdown guy, and some people say that he didn't have a lot of interceptions in college. They weren't throwing at him. They weren't testing him because he was a shutdown guy. Watch... The Clemson-Alabama game and the difference in how effective Alabama's offense was once McKenzie got hurt and didn't play in that second half. 
the whole the whole script switched, and that has a lot to do with Alexander being off the field, and his mentality is brilliant. At the combine, they, they, they spoke to him about covering Laquan Treadwell and Will Fuller, two very different receivers in this draft class, and gave and he gave a full breakdown in completely different form how he would cover those two guys, and then followed up by saying, I'm the best corner in this draft, and he just makes me believe him. It's a guy that'll come in and he's not only going to be willing to guard these number one receivers, but he's going to want that. That's the challenge that Mackenzie Aller wants, and that's the attitude that you need to be a shutdown corner in this league. You have to be cocky. It's something that I think that we kind of have to just understand. You look at Sherman, and you look at Josh Norman, and you even take a look at Patrick Peterson. They are cocky, loudmouth guys, and it's just the attitude that it seems almost needed for the position. You know, Darrell Revis doesn't do as much drawing, but he's still an in-your-face top guy, um, type guy. And and I think for that reason, McKelly, McKenzie Alexander is a great pick, and I think that it's it's the direction that the, the Philadelphia Eagles should be going. Now, pick 14, the, the Raiders... It, it's a little interesting now because they have secondary needs clearly. Charles Woodson retires. Obviously, you have secondary needs. But I mentioned before in 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 one of the in the previous video, um, they they have that young core of Derek Carr, Latavius Murray, and Amari Cooper. And I think that you you just want to make life easy for them and you want to protect them. And they did that by signing Osmealy today, the, and Osmealy can play left tackle. But I think that they could go out and they could get Taylor Decker, the Ohio State tackle. And maybe he's a right tackle, maybe he's a left tackle, not sure. But look at the Cowboys. Look at what happens when you strengthen your offensive line. It's just, it does so much for you. And you can put, if, if Decker looks prepared to play left tackle right away, Osmelli goes and plays guard and is lethal, lethal in that guard spot. So... Osmelli's versatility allows the Raiders to still go with Taylor Decker, and if that and if the Raiders can pair those three guys with an elite offensive line, then the Raiders have a real shot in that AFC West. Which, with the way Bron- the Broncos are going to be losing guys, Malik Jackson is not going to be the first name to go. I just mentioned just a couple seconds ago, Danny Trevathan could be a Bear, and, and again, that that's it's a number of pieces that you're going to see the Broncos lose. So the AFC West it, it's going to be open, and, and the Raiders do have a chance. If, if they make the right decisions. Pick 15, the Los Angeles Rams. No longer the St. Louis Rams, Los Angeles Rams. Um, to, to, again, I don't see the 49ers taking a quarterback, and the Eagles obviously aren't going to be taking a quarterback. And that was a lot of the reason why people didn't have a, a quarterback available here for the Rams when you would see their mock drafts. Um, but for me, they're they're definitely going to have the, the option now. And if the 49ers, for some reason, do go with a quarterback, they'll still have a top three option here of, of who's on the board. And I think that they get Jared Goff. The California kid stays in Cali. I think he can handle the spotlight. And you, you look at his last his last game ever at Cal. Bowl game, throws seven touchdowns against Air Force. And not, obviously not the best defense, but they're not going to be asking that much of him. The the Rams feature a very scary defense, a very, very good defense, and one of the most promising talents in, in the NFL in Todd Gurley. They're just going to be looking for, for Goff to be better than Nick Foles, and that's not saying much because Nick Foles last season, I, I don't even understand it. I, I thought Nick Foles was, was a good, solid starting quarterback, and he was so, so bad for the Rams. But you bring Goff in, and I, I think that he can – help you automatically and he can be your starting guy and, and Gurley takes a lot of pressure off him with the way the Rams defense is they won't have to score you know they're not going to be X to score 30 game and you also get a guy like Tavon Austin who I think is going to really make life easier for, for Goff the, the playmaker he's just you he can do so many different things Austin that I think Goff and the Rams is a perfect match made in heaven that is 11 through 15 come back we'll do 16 to 20 do not forget to comment down below. What do you think? Uh, you know, are, are these the right selections? Jared Goff, is he going to still be a ra- available at, at pick 15? Are teams going to be trading up to get him? You, you don't know here. Where do the Eagles go? The Raiders go? There's a lot a lot of interesting picks in this 11 to 15 range. So comment down below what you think. Don't forget to check out the full mock draft on my blog description. The link will be in the description. We'll come right back 16 to 20. <laughs> 